Howdy, duty dandy, everyone. We got to look at Tesla earnings, okay? Big, big stuff here. One of the most anticipated so far of the season, obviously, because, well, it's Tesla. We all want to know about this company in terms of profitability, in terms of hidden vehicle delivery goals. It's crazy to see. So, obviously, you see after hours, the stock's up 1.6%. Uh, it was up a little bit higher, closer to 3%, actually. Um, so we'll see what's leading it upward, and uh, and see what's go see what see what's happening with this thing. So let's look at these um, from a non-gap perspective. An EPS of seventy six cents beats by sixteen cents. Uh, pretty good from that that perspective. Um, from a gap perspective, now there is improvement here. Obviously, if we're talking about year over year, so. Uh, you know, I appreciate that from them, but you do need to obviously mention here that they missed by 16 cents, did not hit goals in terms of actual gap profitability. So we'll take a look at that, obviously. But from a revenue perspective, good numbers here, 8.7 billion, up 39% year over year is big. It's big numbers. Uh, beats by 460 million. I got to be honest, you can call me out all day, all day on this, because I didn't think they were necessarily going to hit their target in terms of of, uh, of this. I, I really didn't. I thought delivery numbers would not be necessarily where they were quite expected, but, you know, pretty good. Uh, automotive margin of 27.7 versus a consensus of 24.1, which leads to a lot of that in terms of profitability. Big stuff, and that's over its Q2 numbers. Um so you have to give it credit. Um, you really do for what they're able to do. Uh, quality stuff, if we go into more details, obviously, in terms of deliveries, our production, there was 145,000 vehicles made, up 51% year over year, and 139,000 delivered, which is up 44% year over year. Um, so good to see in that aspect. Those are very quality numbers. Uh uh, very quality numbers in terms of improvement. Um, so, uh, in terms of profitability, as I mentioned here, um, uh, we get a quote. Obviously, lovely stuff here. Uh, our operating income improved in a quarter three to record level of 809 million. Uh, resulting in a 9.2% operating margin. This profit level was reached while we uh, took increased uh, SBC expense in Q3, attributable to the 2018 CEO award, of which 290 uh, million was triggered uh, by a significant increase in share price and market cap um, and a new operational milestone becoming probable. Uh, positive profit impacts include strong volume, better fixed cost absorption, and continuous cost reduction. Hmm, good to see that. Um, and they are confirming here their delivery target of 500,000 this year versus a consensus of uh, 476,000, which would be pretty massive in terms of a pandemic year to, to do that, those kind of numbers. Um, and they say that... Uh, uh, the Model Y and Shanghai Gigafactory are key to the hitting this mark. Uh, Tesla says it could, uh, should have sufficient liquidity to help fund its product roadmap, long-term capacity extension plans, and other expenses. Plenty of liquidity. We'll look at the balance sheet, obviously, to see if that's quite accurate. So we're hopeful that it is, but we'll take a look. Obviously, you see here, just mentions really delivery. Um, uh, overall, Model S's. You see 15,200 delivered, and Model 3 uh, and Ys, you see 124,100 delivered. Pretty good to see on that. We have the slides, quarter three update. Look at this. This is the most nonsense thing I've ever seen. I mean, can you not get more exciting than this? It's Elon frickin' Musk, and this is quarter three update. So boring. It makes me want to cry <coughs> and throw up, apparently. That's really what it makes me want to do. So from highlights, $5.9 billion increase in our cash and cash equivalents. We'll look at that balance sheet, okay? We're going to freaking look. <laughs> um, I don't know what that was, but uh, Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue. That's about all I can tell you. I hope you like Gorilla Glue, because I do. Um, uh, Gorilla Glue. 
Um, from a financial standpoint, uh, you see quarter over quarter, 47% increase in automotive revenues, 42% increase year over year. Good stuff. Gross profit up 60% quarter over quarter and 72% year over year. That's massive. Total revenues, 45 quarter over quarter and 39% year over year. Good, 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 good numbers. Uh, you know, those are really good numbers. I'm proud of this company for what they're doing. Um, I'm not saying the stock's worth the, the value it's at, but <laughs> operating expenses obviously rose as well. Not unexpected, obviously. You see you're doing a lot more business. You're going to have a lot more in terms of operating expenses. That's just kind of how it runs. I'm sorry to tell you. Um, adjusted EBITDA saw a 49% increase. Pretty nice. Um, net income line actually still increased 218% even though it was a miss in terms of that net income line. Um, pretty nice and EPS rose 170% year over year. Pretty massive but that's again compared to 11 cents EPS. Uh, you know nothing nothing too crazy that's for sure or uh, a 10 cents quarter over quarter and a 69% year over year. <laughs> it's funny. That's just funny. That's so funny. Um, I mean, this is the most hilarious thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, production, obviously, we saw how this went as well. Year over year model, uh, what you need to mention here is the Model S actually decreased 13%, but that's not unexpected, right? The Model 3 has become the mainstay and the Model Y, obviously. They're the mainstay of this company, which increased 56% year over year. So where the Model 3 or Model S shows failures, it's really just people moving on to a new vehicle. And eventually you might think, mm, maybe the Model S isn't worth manufacturing. I don't know. We'll see how that looks like. Um, solar deployments increasing pretty steadily. Good for them. Um, not necessarily the key business for them, but, you know, that's how it is. Supercharger stations increase 32% year over year. And connectors up 33% year over year. So pretty, pretty good. That's wild stuff. Um, Shanghai, they can produce over 250,000 Model 3s. Crazy stuff. Um, Model Ys, they're still constructing. They're still constructing. Berlin Gigafactory, obviously constructing. And then Texas factory is in development for the Cybertruck, the Semi, and the Roadster. Could be big stuff for him in the future. I know I'm buying me a, I'm buying me a cyber truck, baby. So, the only other thing I would like to say um, is super super important. Uh, as far as products, they they give an outlook here, which I like to see. Um, they made obviously their target as we saw, but as far as the outlook's concerned, um, so uh, currently building the Model Y capacity in Shanghai. Berlin and Texas and uh, uh, remain on track to start deliveries from each location in 2021 they should be able to deliver in Berlin Texas wild stuff Texas uh, semi deliveries will begin in 2021 could be a massive business for this company actually um, if they're the first to it we'll see how that looks like uh, obviously photos here as far as the um, Model Y. See how that's coming along in Shanghai. Let's let's see how we're rocking this out. Um, they're really constructing this thing like a non non stop beauty. Um, the Berlin Gigafactory. You see it's under construction. It's coming along pretty well. I mean, look at them. Look at these people just absolutely just build. They're just building. Uh, and the Gigafactory in Texas. Well, they leveled out the plot of land, so they're gonna start building that as soon as they can. Um, uh, pretty nice, obviously. You see, these charts are showing good numbers, but we like to look at the balance sheet, okay? I want to take you on a trip to the balance sheet. Uh, total current assets on this company. Look at this. this is the balance sheet I like to look at because it gives you all these numbers that you love. I'll be highlighting the ones that I'm looking at. Uh, total current assets, 21, 21 million, $21 dollars. 21 billion dollars uh, 21 billion dollars 21.7 billion I should say that's compared to year over year 
uh, 10.9 billion. That's a massive improvement in terms of cash and cash equivalents. Uh, total assets in general, uh, 45.6 billion versus 40 or versus 32.8 billion. Big improvements there. Um, as far as a liabilities perspective, let's take a look at that. Um, total uh, liabilities in general. We'll see these highlighted numbers. Uh, you see total assets rose by quite a bit more than the total um, cur uh, total liabilities did. So I'm pretty impressed with that. We're talking about $28.1 billion. Compared to a year ago, it's $25.3 billion. So you see the uh, total asset line actually rose by close to uh, $13 million. But the uh, total liabilities line only increased by right around three billion dollars. So that's a crazy, crazy improvement. Um, that's a really big improvement. We're talking about four times, you know, the amount of assets the grew compared to uh, debt. Pretty big, and you see stockholder equity, as we'll highlight here, has risen quite significantly over the last few quarters. Uh, now at sixteen billion dollars in stockholder equity. That's quality stuff. Um, this company is building a decent, decent balance sheet, and I think it's pretty exciting if you're a shareholder. Now, if it's a stock you're trying to get into, I still don't like the valuation. I want to mention that, too. And people think I'm crazy, obviously. People pay for a luxury stock. It's, you know, quality with growth coming to it. I get that. But I also want to throw out there that, uh, yeah, I mean... This thing is ridiculously valued. It's ridiculous. It's valued quite, quite high. Again, we saw the potential of uh, close to, let's say, close to thirty billion dollars in terms of annualized revenue, um, and we're trading at a market cap of three hundred ninety billion. It's high valuation. It's cheaper than it's been. To be fair. This company has been valued uh, quite a bit uh, more than, than where it's at right now, technically. But, again, need to mention this. Um, yeah, need to mention this. It's, it's still a stock that's up ridiculously year-to-date, still up 391%. Crazy stuff. Crazy numbers. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this and you had a good one.